Welcome to the Julie Bearwood channel. This is video number two. Uh, this is the video that I promised you. The tulip is an alternative to emergency cricoid thyroidotomy. Now, that's a pretty radical thing to say. Um, the later slides will identify why we think that's true. Uh, we are going to use consultant statements uh, from several different individuals that state that the patient um, was seriously compromised before they used a tulip. And uh, according to one particular person who approached me at the Difficult Airways Society meeting in Istanbul, the, you know, he came up to me and said uh, the tulip saved his patient's life. I've got to tell you, I got a little bit emotional about that. I, I personally think that's the, you know, the moment of validation for me. But point is, as I said, OK, that's, you know, I need to see that in writing so I can show others. And he agreed. And today I'll show you what what he wrote. That was uh, then presented as a, as a case presentation at another conference. So, you know, it's no longer anecdotal. Now, just as a quick recap for those people who haven't seen the first two videos yet, the tulip comes in two types. On the left, as you can see, there is a, the basic version, which just has a straightforward connector, and the one on the right has uh, a lip guard and a headband. That's really kind of optimal for you know use anywhere, um, but you know particularly in places like the military ambulances and the like. Those basically, there are three different versions, with the red being super large for adults and the other two being pediatric. The blue one on the left is pediatric, five to 10 years of age. The yellow, uh, size one, is uh, 10 to 15 years of age. Green, size two, is adult female. Orange, size three, is adult male. Red, size four, is oversized in the same way as the Goodell's are. The clear version is really for um, intubation, uh, upper GI endoscopy and bronchoscopy, so you can see the um, scopes going through the tube. Now, the tulip is completely different. Okay, It works on a basis of a circumferential oropharyngeal seal. It's an oropharyngeal airway. It is not supraglottic. So it sits at this level. So it sits just behind the tongue. It's not right down here. And it's not right down there. It doesn't make you cough or vomit or gag. Now, this then enables it to be tolerated in a semi-conscious condition, which then means you can control the airway in a semi-conscious condition. So it is, in fact, the only airway that could replace the Gadellan mask due to this semi-conscious position. If the device, if the tulip was any larger, it would cause gagging and coughing and vomiting. So it can't actually be any larger without getting you know, a bit worse. This semi-conscious tolerance isn't possible with a, a laryngeal mask or an eye gel. I think people know that. Now, just as a quick recap, the tulip sits in the oropharynx, the single tube. It completely includes that with a large uh, volume, uh, low pressure cuff. Now, that is the location. And as you can see on this picture, the, um, the tulip sits between the soft palate here and the tip of the epiglottis here. It completely includes the whole of the oropharynx. It seals in a circumferential manner. It's a balloon inside a tube, one tube, not three, you know, one, two, three, one, two, three. This is any place where it's not. So basically it enables it to the, this cuff to completely occlude. You could raise the pressure in that cuff uh, and you could generate pretty much any pressure, ventilating pressure you like. We recommend you maintain the pressure in the cuff at 40 millimeters of mercury, e.g. Uh, mucosal perfusion pressure, that's 50 centimeters of water. You don't need any more because a big cuff just occludes the whole space. Now, in terms of the, the shape, as in previous video, this green shape here and this blue shape here are a similar are similar for, uh, for for all the good reasons. Basically, the tulip only stimulates a glossopharyngeal nerve. It doesn't go down into the recurrent laryngeal where an ET tube might. It doesn't go down into the superior laryngeal nerve like uh, an LMA or an ET tube would, uh, an LMA or an eye gel would. So that means the glossopharyngeal nerve where the tulip sits basically induces swallowing. It doesn't cause gagging or coughing or vomiting. And that then means it can be used in semi-conscious use, unlike LMAs and RGLs. Right, let's get to the meat of it. The title of the video is The Tulip is an Alternative to Emergency Cricoid Thyroidotomy. OK, let's support that with some evidence. Now, this is the gentleman who approached me at the Difficult Airway Society meeting in Istanbul and said um, 
a dog's shake. The tu your tulip saved my patient's life. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I got all emotional. Um, I wasn't expecting it. He just turned up and said that to me. Um, I wasn't quite ready for it. Um, you know, on, re and on reflection, you know, I've got to tell you that was the moment of validation for me. It was like, really, does it work that well? And the answer is, yeah, it does seem to. So I said, listen, thank you for that. I said, would you mind writing it down for me so I can share with others? And he did. And here it is. So with your permission, I'm going to read it slowly with you because I think this is somewhere serious that I'm going to take you now. So this gentleman is um, not from England, so he apologises for his uh, bad English. And I'll explain why in a moment. That's important. OK, let's start with this. Now, this is on induction of anaesthesia. All right. The other one that I'm going to show you is on extubation, on recovery. So he goes, yes, hi, of course. I'll write my uh, I'll write my patient who used tulip. First, I'm sorry for my bad English. Doesn't matter, does it? Anyway, she was a patient with a difficult airway due to a tumoral lesion of the oral quality. Now, that's oral cavity as to whether it's spell check. God knows. According to the guidelines, awake intubation was required. However, since cooperation could not be established, awake intubation was not considered. After anaesthesia induction, firstly a MACD video laryngoscope was used, but we were not successful. Now that is difficult airway society plan A. Right. Secondly, we wanted to place an LMA, a laryngeal mask, but we were not successful and that's difficult airway society plan B. We considered ventilation with a face mask, but we had difficulty in performing ventilation as difficult airway society plan C. At this stage, when all hope was lost. Now, if you're an anaesthetist, that's a place. We placed a tulip and provided better ventilation with the tulip. Now, I'm going to hasten to add, not better, the only. Finally, we performed intubation with a fibre optic loaded from the tulip through the N3 catheter. Now, I'm going to ask you, this is can't intubate, can't ventilate, isn't it? So my question to you is now, what would you have done? If you didn't have a tulip, what are you going to do? Now, unless you have a tulip, as far as I can see, the only option is a surgical access. Now, that can be through cannulas, that can be through incisions, that can be through a number of things. But you're going surgical, aren't you? Now, I'm looking forward to what some seriously learned people say to this. So I really am interested as to what my colleagues think they would have done next. Now, I am looking forward to one of you not proving me wrong as such, because the tulip clearly saved this patient's life. That's quite clear. But what alternatives do we have if you don't have a tulip? Now, let's go to the let's go to the next one. OK, this is that exact event written up by the consultant who did it. So I looked up the word anecdotal and it means basically a fairy tale of sorts, but usually observations by a non clinical person. Well, this is an observation by a consultant and ethicist. It's no longer anecdotal. This was presented at a, at a, at a conference. Uh, and it was done by Dr. Yilmaz. Basically, I'm not expecting you to read that, but of course, if you want to read it, you can. Um, I've put this, I know it's in microscopic print, but the point is, it's really evidencing that what was anecdotal no longer is. Now, again, this is can't intubate, can't ventilate, right? Now, guess what? This is a military user. This is yet another doctor who's going to present a Euro anesthesia in Lisbon in May, and it's called, can you believe, can't intubate, can't oxygenate crisis management, case report on the use of the tulip airway. Now, I will be presenting there as well. Uh, and that's again, you know, what's normal about tulip, not much. So I will be presenting because I've also been accepted for presentation as has this military doctor. OK, so 
The video is called A Tulip is an Alternative to Emergency Crack with Thyroidotomy. You want some evidence? This is evidence on recovery, another statement from another consultant in another country. Right, here we go. Let's basically, he, he, I, I discussed what Dr. Yilmaz sent me and he said, well, look, that happened to me. Do you remember? And I said, yeah, I do. And he wrote it down and he said, post-operative, let's start here. OK, we'll let's start with post-operatively. This is where the, the meat of it is. Post-operatively, we're in the recovery unit when the patient was emerging from the anaesthetic and the operation. It was obvious that he was in severe respiratory obstruction with the Goodell airway not helping. Remember what I said? Goodell masks don't always help. He was semi-conscious with oxygen saturations of 45%. OK, that's somewhere. And in an imminent arrest situation. I hope you're feeling that. A laryngeal mask could not be passed by resident staff, and that was because the patient was too awake. The patient had had an operation on an eye gel. The eye gel had been removed. The patient was now semi-conscious, but we couldn't make them breathe. Goodell mask, nothing worked. Now, this patient was actually within this clinical trial. What happened was he was quite a stocky chap with a short neck and all that. And we basically tried to ventilate with a mask. This consultant anaesthetist tried to ventilate with a, a mask, couldn't used a Goodell, barely. Then we used a tulip, perfect. Then the tulip came out and then an eye gel went in and he went to the th in theatres, had his operation. Now it's recovery. The eye gel comes out because he's a bit awake and what then happens is he's completely obstructed. Goodell mask doesn't work. It didn't work on the way in, you recall, and now it doesn't work at all. Right, so a laryngeal mask could not be passed because he's too awake. The situation changed from calm to panic. OK, let's talk about this. You've got a consultant anaesthetist who's using the word panic. OK, you had a size four tulip airway on your person. I was there. We inserted it and blew the cuff up and there was a patent airway, no laryngospasm and the onset of normal respiration resumed. Oxygen saturations normalize and calmness again prevailed. How the staff thanked you in your airway. It's funny how memorable that is to me, even though I was an anaesthetist for 40 years. I just have a look at this. We got an exclamation mark out of a consultant anaesthetist. You know, there was always access to a tulip airway in my anaesthetic room after that event. And just think about those words. There's only one device that could have got him out in that situation. It was a tulip. And again, I'm going to ask my colleagues who are watching this, what would you have done? Without a tulip, what are you going to do? Now, I'm looking forward to your answers. I really am. Right, so that's all quite spectacular, right? But I think those two statements do define to you very clearly that a tulip solves the can't intubate, can't ventilate. Now, I'm not sure it's going to solve it every single time. But it seems to solve it on induction and recovery, and it seems to work in a way that nothing else does. It's also the semi-tolerance, uh, semi-conscious tolerance stuff. But look, that's great, right? Now, give me some evidence about why it can be used for style elective you know, anesthesia, the boring stuff, right? OK, let's talk about the normal stuff. It says here, now this is yet another statement from yet another consultant in a yet another country. Now, this chap's a prof. The tulip has been my constant ally in my daily practice as an anesthesiologist. It has almost completely replaced the use of supraglottic airway devices. It has greatly affected the way I handle airway management for short and moderately long procedures for malampati one to three class patients. Now remember, in the previous video, I talked about airway burns. So I'm talking four. I'm talking your worst nightmare. This innovation of the Goodell, in my opinion, should be present in all areas of the hospital due to its ease of application. It improves ventilation dramatically and may aid efforts in resuscitation of arrested patients. Well, that's a reasonably convincing statement, don't you think? But OK, hang on. You say GA, you say starved elective, it's all good, great. How long for? Well, how about this? I've tried to use the airway, tried using the airway a few times now. I find it very efficient in maintaining the airway for both sedation and 
the use of the general anesthesia. One of my patients was under spinal with this as an airway support and with sevoflurane uh, at low MAC as an inhalational. Okay, the procedure was a partial hip done on the, with the patient positioned on the lateral decubitus, so on the side, for four hours. Well, hang on a minute. Isn't that like all starved elective anesthesia almost? Now, I recommend you go back to the website and have another look at the, the bits and pieces. The other videos will be coming out reasonably shortly. Um, I recommend that you also download the one pages when they're up uh, just so you can get the salient points rather than, you know, having to listen to somebody talk if that's not your bag. Um, additionally, I would... Um, um, Try some. Basically, shortly there will be a box of five available for people just to try. All the conversation in the world won't make a difference to how this thing works. And when it works, you won't need me to tell you anything. It will just work. But I'm just keen for you to know how to use it, how to size it, so that basically, you know, when it goes wrong or something like that, it's not the tulip's fault. Because it, it's unlikely to be. I've got to tell you something straight. So it's about getting the right size, not overdoing it, basically taking control. You know, it's performance car, basically. Take, You know, don't. 0 to 60 in 3.2 is not what you're looking for, right? So, by all means, make some make some comments there. I, I'm looking forward to what uh, my colleagues have to say about the, you know, those two particular uh, incidents on induction and recovery. What would you have done? That's what I want to know. Because my solution is tulip, and I'd really like to know what yours is. I'll see you on the next video.